July 17, 2014 started out like any summer day. We all loved being on the water. The Batchelder family gathered together along the shore of Lake Burton in Georgia. Well, we were commenting earlier that day that it was like heaven there. A possible foreshadowing for what was about to happen. Did Ryan love boating? Did he love being he on He loved boat? being on the water. His room is actually decorated in the nautical theme, ironically. At the family's home in Lake Worth, Florida, Meg walked us through Ryan's short life and pictures. Oh One of her favorites, this photo. Teethy grin from ear to ear, still wet from a plunge in Lake Burton. This picture was taken just a couple days before the accident. The last time Meg saw Ryan alive, he was climbing on board this 2000 Malibu Response LX with his brother, cousins, and uncles. According to a police report, all four kids were sitting in the front of the boat. The driver was going in a circle to create waves to splash the kids in the bow. When the boat hit one of the waves, the bow took on a lot of water and Ryan and his cousin were ejected out of the vessel. The driver, according to the police report, immediately put the vessel in reverse. When they realized Ryan was missing, the driver jumped in the water to look for Ryan and found him stuck in the propeller. Ryan died from his injuries. Ryan's mom and dad watched this horrific scene from shore. The first night, you're just, you're just thinking that it's impossible to survive. So you're thinking about how you'll end it. And but over time, Meg knew she needed to find a purpose to move forward and to give her little boy a legacy. His love for stuffed animals is the inspiration behind Little Hugs, a foundation that donates stuffed animals to children going through hardships. It's my way of continuing my relationship with Ryan and I, he was such a loving boy. And it's just my way of putting his love out into the world that he wasn't able to do here in person. His tragic accident hitting close to home for a California family. In 2006, Nikki Bell was close to graduating from college. This happy, playful 22 year old from Paradise, California was looking forward to a full life. But while on a boat with her friends, Nikki's world came to a sudden stop. In a bizarre twist of fate, a passenger on the boat captured these images of the moment the bow started to swamp. You can see Nikki actually trying to hang on, but in the final shot, she's gone. Nikki was washed overboard and hit by the propeller, struck four times in the head. I know that you don't remember much about, do you remember anything about your accident? No, no. Nikki is now 34 years old. She and her family agreeing to their first television interview since the accident. Yeah. As a family, how has this changed you, mom or dad? <laughs> you guys are both going to cry. <laughs> In what way? It's changed a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, something you wouldn't wish on anybody. Today, Nikki is blind in one eye and has a severe brain injury from multiple skull fractures. A propeller from the boat struck her with such force, she lost a part of her frontal lobe. Well, it just sucks because I can't see out of my left eye, I can't taste, can't smell, I can't drive, and it's like, I'm freaking 34 years old, I want to drive, I want to do my own thing. In 2011, a jury found Mastercraft primarily at fault for the accident. The driver of the boat was found 20% responsible. The Bells argued the design of Mastercraft's X-45 boat was defective and the company didn't adequately test it. You assume that a company with, that puts out a product is gonna, any company is going to test their product before they put it out to the consumers. The jury awarded Nikki $30 million. In a statement to News 4, Mastercraft said, in part, the boat was not defective in design or manufacture. The accident which injured the plaintiffs in that case was unsafe operation of the boat. Mastercraft appealed the verdict, but ultimately settled the case without admitting liability. Mastercraft said it did not make any specific changes in its products as a result of the case. Ryan's parents have now filed a lawsuit against Malibu claiming the company manufactured a boat which contains safety defects and failed to adequately test its Malibu Response LX bow rider. 
to ensure that it performs safely. In a statement to News 4, Malibu told us it is truly saddened by the tragic loss of a young child. However, the company maintains the boat the Batchelders had rented was used 14 years with no problems. In fact, after the investigation was complete, the company even told us the boat was rented again on two occasions without incident. Depositions in Ryan's case have begun and News 4 obtained several of them. Malibu's current CEO testifying that safety is their number one priority. In our design and in our manufacture, absolutely. And I think our track record is just absolutely exemplary in the numbers of boats, people, hours that we have had without an incident.